a long time, retro video game, computer, and vintage electronic collectors have pondered how to bring new life to aging yellowed plastics. This problem has spawned many solutions, with the most well-known being Retrobrite. This method takes on several forms using hydrogen peroxide creams, liquids, UV light, and heat. However, all have their own set of problems ranging from uneven color restoration and streaking. But it looks like there's a new improved Retrobrite method that seems to be better than the rest. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'll be doing something a little different. I'll actually be going outside, in, in nature. nature. Anyway, I'll be sharing with you a new method to restore some of those old retro consoles in your collection that have yellowed over time. Now, one of the more popular ways of restoring yellowed plastics is to use a method called Retrobrite. The word Retrobrite is a sort of catch-all term that describes the various methods that use hydrogen peroxide to restore yellowed plastics. One such method is to apply peroxide cream meant for bleaching hair onto the plastic and wrapping it in cling wrap while exposing it to UV light. Then there are some of the more obscure methods, such as the one I tried a little over a year ago, which uses a sous vide to apply heat to the hydrogen peroxide, thereby enabling the reaction to turn the plastic back to its original color. Anyway, no matter which of these methods you use, they all require you to put the yellowed plastic in direct contact to either a liquid or cream hydrogen peroxide solution. Now, there are some issues that could arise using these methods, such as streaking and uneven color restoration. Additionally, in the case of the hair cream, there could be other harsh additives present that could bleach the plastic pigment, further altering the plastic's color, as well as making the plastic itself more brittle. This is where the new method of Retrobrite comes in, which hopefully alleviates some of these issues. This new method comes from Simon Locke, an avid retro gaming enthusiast and restorer. Simon was actually critical in helping me repair and restore my laser active system when I ran into a couple snags and is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to retro console restoration. So I definitely recommend you check him out on Twitter at Ergen, where he posts a lot of his restoration and retro gaming projects. Anyway, Simon has been experimenting with methods to restore yellowed plastics back to their original color for quite a while. And all that research has led him to this new contactless retro bright method. This method primarily relies on having a completely sealed container to trap the gases produced by the evaporated hydrogen peroxide liquid. Now, I know that sounds sort of complicated, but it's actually a pretty simple concept, which I'll get into in just a bit. What's great about this method is that it doesn't require you to apply a chemical directly to the plastic shell. Rather, the hydrogen peroxide vapor reacts evenly with the plastic surface, leading to a more uniform restoration. Plus, it works wonders on colored plastics as well, such as this blue Game Gear shell. I mean, the results are pretty stunning. Now, there are some other great benefits to this method, but I'll go over those in the pros and cons segment of this video. So be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you all the supplies you'll need for this Retrobrite restoration method. Then I'll go over the entire process step-by-step, step, go over the results I had with this new method, discuss some of the lessons learned and how to potentially get better results, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing you'll need is of course hydrogen peroxide, but not just any store-bought version of hydrogen peroxide will work. You'll need to get one that is unstable, in distilled water, and between 10 and 20%. I bought this one, which is 12% off Amazon. I'll have a link to it in the video description. The reason we need unstable is because it breaks down easier, which accelerates the chemical reaction process, which is necessary to de-yellow the plastic. Additionally, according to Simon, unstable hydrogen peroxide does not need a lot of UV light to break down, meaning this retrobrite method could be done on a cloudy day. Now, the next item you'll need is just as important as hydrogen peroxide. We'll need an airtight, transparent, sealable container. The reason why we need it to be airtight is because we need to trap all the hydrogen peroxide vapor inside the container. I'm using a larger version of this container, which has a foam gasket built into the lid. I bought these from the container store, but I left a link to a similar version that you can buy off of Amazon. 
Now, the last two things you'll need are for your safety and are an absolute must when handling this strong concentration of hydrogen peroxide. And those items are some protective gloves and goggles. You don't want this type of hydrogen peroxide touching your skin or getting in your eyes as it can cause a slight chemical burn. So yeah, that's everything you need. But before I show you the process, I have to emphasize again to use caution when handling this type of hydrogen peroxide solution. We're using a pretty strong concentration and it must be handled with care. Okay, now that we got all the scary stuff out of the way, here are some photos of my test subjects. First is this Game Boy DMG, which has a slight brownish tint. I also have a Glacier GBA, which is a translucent shell, so the results of this should be pretty interesting. Here we have a PC Engine shell, which is pretty yellowed, as well as its accompanying controller. I'll be using these photos to see how effective this retro bright method is. But without any further ado, let's head outside and get right into it. Okay, so here we are in the great outdoors. I'm actually at my parents' house filming this since they have a backyard and I don't. And as you can see, it's a beautiful sunny day and roughly 86 degrees out here. So here I'm laying out my sealable container and as you can see, it's pretty big. I wanna be able to fit all the shells into a single large container and retro bright them all at the same time. I'm pouring the hydrogen peroxide into the top cover since it serves as a larger base. And as you can see, I'm doing a major no-no and not wearing gloves. I actually got some hydrogen peroxide on my hands and it did sting and stain my hands. So please, please wear gloves and goggles when handling this stuff. So I think I ended up using about one and a half bottles, so roughly 24 ounces. And here you can see I'm arranging the shells. Now I'm using clear Tupperware and plastic cups to suspend the shells over the hydrogen peroxide. You actually wanna make sure that the part of the shell you want to retrobrite is not covered by anything. I put all the shells in a position so that all the parts that I wanna treat are facing up. And you obviously should remove any of the electronics from the plastic shells when doing this process. Just the shells should be in the container and not any electronics. I also wouldn't recommend doing this on plastics that have paper labels on them, such as game carts. The humidity inside the container will most likely ruin them. Now, once I get everything all positioned the way I want them, I put the cover on and lock all the tabs to seal the container. I try to do this carefully without knocking any of the shells over. And taking an initial temperature reading, it's kind of hard to read, but it's about 83 to 84 degrees. And after about 30 minutes, you can already see the hydrogen peroxide condensing on the container walls, which is what we want to see. So, so far, so good. And now after about two hours in, I'm getting a reading of roughly 125 degrees. It's really sunny outside, so I'm hoping we get good results. Here's another angle and you can really see that the hydrogen peroxide is condensing on the container walls. So it's doing its job at keeping the hydrogen peroxide vapors inside, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so the sun has begun to set and now the container is in the shadows, but it's been about six hours. I wish I could see the shells inside to see if they need to be in there for more time, but the actual container itself is pretty opaque, making it difficult. Anyway, the temperature reading I'm getting on the container is about 82 degrees, so things have cooled down quite a bit. But let's go ahead and crack open the container and remove the shells. Here you can see I'm actually using gloves this time, which is what I should have done from the very beginning. I also have to give a huge shout out to my amazing mom, who is helping me film this segment of the video. So thank you mom, love you lots. And now I'm just using a garden hose to rinse off the shells. And these GBA shells still look a bit yellow, but definitely quite a bit less. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the before and after results in just a moment to see how effective this new RetroBright process is. So yeah, that's the whole RetroBright process. Pretty simple, but now it's time to head back to the studio and check out these results. All right, so these shells were kept in the hydrogen peroxide vapor chamber for about six hours. And the big question is, how effective was the RetroBright method? So let's see what the final results look like. Let's start with the DMG. This is what it looked like before. And after being in the chamber for roughly six hours, there is definitely a noticeable difference. I think it could have benefited from being in the chamber a bit longer, but it's lighter than it was before. In this photo, you can see it compared to a good condition DMG, and it's definitely closer to that color but still just a bit yellow. Okay, next up is the GBA, which has a translucent shell. 
So this is what it looked like before. Pretty bad. And here's what it looks like after. There's still some yellow on the shell around the top and where the speaker grill is, but it's certainly a drastic improvement. Again, I think this could have benefited from being in the chamber just a little bit longer. And here it is next to a good condition GBA with a glacier shell, and while it is still yellow in some areas, there is definitely an improvement. Alright, let's take a look at the PC engine. So this one had a small but noticeable improvement. I'm actually pretty happy with the overall results. And the last item is the PC Engine controller. I actually think this one has a more noticeable improvement than the PC Engine console shell, which is interesting. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the results, but after going through the process, I think I can produce better results the next time I do this. So let's go over some of the lessons learned from this experience. Something that I think that would have improved the results would be if I used a container with less overall volume. The container I used was a little bit larger than necessary, and the extra room I feel reduced the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide vapor. I'm not entirely certain that a smaller container would have improved the results, but looking at Simon's post, he definitely used smaller containers relative to the amount of hydrogen peroxide used. The other thing that I could have done differently was leave the shells inside the container for a longer period of time, and perhaps even overnight. The longer exposure to the vapor I'm almost positive would have produced better results. But regardless, I definitely saw a reduction of the yellowing, and I'm sure I can achieve better results next time. Okay, so now let's go over some of the pros and cons of this RetroBright method. Starting with the pros, what I really like about this method is that we are not putting the shells in direct contact with hydrogen peroxide products like other RetroBright methods. That sort of gives me a warm and fuzzy, even though the overall chemical reaction may be the same. Another great thing is that the cleanup process is relatively simple. For example, RetroBright methods that use hydrogen peroxide creams are pretty messy and do require a thorough post-process cleanup. With this method, you just need to do a thorough rinsing with water and that's it. Additionally, this method is repeatable. You don't need strong UV light or high temperatures, meaning you can do this on a cloudy day and don't need to rely on good weather. Also, according to Simon, using this method restores a lot of the flexibility and strength properties of the plastics. This means that hinges, moving parts, edges, and screw posts are no longer as weak and are less likely to fracture. Now, keep in mind, you won't be able to restore the plastic shell all the way back to its original strength, but it does make a good deal of difference. Additionally, this method provides a much more even restoration. Some of the other RetroBright methods sometimes result in uneven restoration and streaking. This seems to be completely alleviated by this method. Even colored shells achieve fantastic results, which isn't always the case when using hydrogen peroxide creams, which have bleaching agents that can deteriorate the colored pigments. And the last pro is that this method doesn't appear to affect the silkscreen graphics on the shells, such as the PC Engine decal shown here, which is fantastic. The same unfortunately can't be said about the peroxide creams, which do have bleaching agents and have the potential to damage those decals. Okay, so those are the pros. But now, let's get into the cons. And the biggest con for me is that this method uses a pretty aggressive form of hydrogen peroxide. It requires you to be careful, but if you do take the proper precautions, you should be fine. I wouldn't consider this method dangerous, but you do have to be cautious and wear protective gloves and goggles when handling this type of hydrogen peroxide. And the last con, in my opinion, is that this is not a permanent treatment of plastic. This isn't unique to this particular method, all methods of RetroBright aren't permanent. It's a bit of a bummer, but since this method is repeatable and doesn't appear to damage the plastic, I think it's a fantastic solution to an age-old problem. Well, there you have it. A fantastic new way to restore your aging yellowed consoles. So what do you all think? Will you use this new RetroBright method? If so, which consoles will you be giving this treatment to? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.